Meg Log Travel from Tokyo. Hi, I'm Meg. I'm traveling around Kyoto and Osaka right now. In this video, I will share my top 10 spots to visit in Kyoto that aren't temples. Kyoto is not just about historical buildings and temples like Kinkakuji and Kiyomizera, it has a lot more to offer. You will find delightful restaurants, bustling markets, beautiful spots, and plenty more. I'm here to introduce some truly fantastic places, so be sure to stick around until the end. Alright, let's go! Number 1. Vegan Ramen Uzu Kyoto This vegan ramen specialty restaurant opened near the Kyoto Imperial Palace in 2020. Despite its name vegan, non-vegan can also enjoy its food and vibe. The most unique feature of this restaurant is its space designed by Team Lab. Team Lab is a well-known modern art museum that has been visited by notable figures, including Elon Musk and YouTuber Mr. Beast from around the world. When you walk through a long alley lined with cedar trees, leading to the black and white artwork on display. Here, you can relish your vegan meal while beautiful artwork is reflected on your table. All of the restaurant's ramen dishes are prepared with a vegetable-based broth simmered for at least 12 hours. It's not just the vibe and the food. Have a look! When you pour hot water on it, it expands and becomes a hand towel. It's pretty cool, isn't it? In Japan, it's common to use this hand towel to wipe and clean your hands before eating. Okay, so there's a variety of ramen options to choose from and you can see where ramen made with tea-based broth. It's like matcha! In addition to standard ramen dishes such as soy sauce and spicy miso, the restaurant also offers vegan sushi, drinks, and ice cream. The soup crafted from miso and vegetable broth is surprisingly delicious and the noodles have a delightful texture. These onions have no bitterness at all and are sweet and delicious. They had a selection of drinks and I picked the cold brew green tea. Just give it a good shake and you're good to go. That's it, pour the tea and enjoy. It's important to mention that booking online in advance is a must and the good news is that you can do it in English. Additionally, the restaurant is only open from Thursday to Sunday and closed from Monday to Wednesday. Enjoy your meal! Number 2. Shinpukan this is a newly renovated commercial facility that reopened in June 2020. It's a unique kind of hotel that preserves the charm of the historic building while incorporating Kyoto-inspired elements. The facility includes a hotel, a movie theater, and approximately 20 stores. It's a bustling area with both tourists and locals, yet the overall atmosphere remains quiet and relaxed. It's a place where you can unwind, enjoy a meal, and do some shopping. Like I said, there's a bunch of awesome stuff around here, but if you're into travel, you've got to check out the Traveler's Factory. They offer original goods and a selection of sundries from around the world. This store is perfect for those seeking stylish stationery and unique souvenirs. You will also find Stampton Coffee Roasters, a beloved cafe from New York right here. It's blow your mind, coffee enthusiasts highly appraise its presence. The cafe has a straightforward menu and doesn't require reservations. So don't hesitate to drop in after a day of sightseeing and temple visits. Number 3. Nishiki Market If you're in the mood for some delightful street food in Kyoto, Nishiki Market is the ultimate destination. This market boasts a rich history stretching across approximately 390 meters and with over 400 years of tradition. It's a spot where you can enjoy the mix of the old city charm with a lively new vibe offering some fantastic food finds. One highly recommended spot is Nishiki Hirano, a restaurant with a history of over a century. They provide comfortable seating and serve a signature dish called dashimaki made with dashi broth simmered with benito and kelp. Additionally, you can relish freshly fried large brown tempura right in the restaurant. The butter was crispy and the shrimp were plump and delicious. Another must visit is Karikari Hakase, a restaurant that specializes in Kyoto-style takoyaki. 
Here, you can enjoy delicious and reasonably priced Kyoto-style jumbo takoyaki, which has a few differences from its Osaka counterpart, such as the inclusion of chopped cabbage as an ingredient. I like both style takoyaki and this was great. Just a heads up, you cannot walk and eat at Nishiki Market, so be sure to enjoy your food at each shop. One important tip when visiting Nishiki Market is to try to go in the morning if possible, as it tends to get very crowded around lunchtime. Most stores start operating around 9 to 10 in the morning. On the other hand, as evening rolls in, keep in mind that a few shops might shut down a bit earlier. Number 4. Hamburg Labo This restaurant serves delicious hamburgers made from Japanese Wagyu beef or Kyoto pork grilled on the teppanyaki grill. The restaurant offers counter seats where you can easily dine alone or with family and friends. After placing your order using an English available tablet, they will begin cooking. Now, you can watch as the hamburgers are prepared right in front of you. The restaurant takes pride in using a variety of high-quality ingredients such as fresh eggs from Kyoto, buttery breadcrumbs, and the meticulously crafted blend of spices that have been perfected over many years of burger making. Their signature dish is the Kyoto pork hamburger set, made without preservations or coloring agents allowing the full flavor of Kyoto pork to shine. The menu also includes popular options like hamburger steak made from Japanese Wagyu beef and diced steak. During my visit, I got the Kurogi Wagyu hamburger steak and with each bite, the rich meat flavor filled my mouth. The lunch menu is a great deal as it includes a choice of rice or bread and the side of soup, offering an economical set meal. It's not just here, in many restaurants across Japan, lunch items are often more affordable than their dinner counterparts. While dinner is perfect for those seeking an evening atmosphere, if you're in the mood for a delicious hamburger or steak at a more budget-friendly price, lunch is the way to go. While you can visit without a reservation, you should book seats in advance as the restaurant gets quick busy even on weekdays. Reservations can be easily made through the booking site like Tabelog, but it's only available in Japanese, so be sure to use Google Translation. Number 5. Suina Muromachi There is a cool new place in Kyoto that opened up in March 2019. It's right in the heart of the city and goes by the name Suina Muromachi. This spot covers two floors from the basement to the second floor. Inside, you will find loads of fun stuff and the building itself has this modern Kyoto-style design that sets a fantastic vibe for everyone who visits. But here is the real jam, the Pokemon Center on the second floor. If you are a Pokemon fan, you are in for a treat. You can grab all sorts of Pokemon gear like clothes, keychains, towels, and cute stuffed animals. Plus, they've got Pikachu and other Pokemon you can snap pictures with some awesome memories. Down in the basement, there are 15 restaurants ready to serve up Japanese, Western, and Chinese food, so you'll definitely find something delicious to grab some. You will find a big bookstore on the first floor with mostly Japanese books, but you can find some English books and guidebooks too. This place is all about entertainment, shopping, grab, and exploring Kyoto's culture. It's a must visit in the historic city. Number 6. Nanazu Green Tea Nana's Green Tea is a chain of tea specialty stores originating from Japan with approximately 100 stores in Japan and abroad. The act of enjoying tea carries a special significance especially in Kyoto, known as the heart of tea culture. One of the 100 stores around the world is situated on the first floor of Suina Muromachi. Here, you can indulge in traditional Japanese tea and sweets. In addition to matcha, Nana's green tea serves hojicha as well as drinks and sweets based on black sesame bean paste. I've had the pleasure of visiting Nana's green tea several times before, and I highly recommend it their matcha cheesecake. While the portion is small, the taste is rich and exceptional. Number 7. Saryo Suisen Saryo Suisen is a matcha cafe with 7 spots all over Japan. During my recent visit, I checked out their main store in Takatsuji. 
this place is pretty famous for using the top-notch uji matcha and even a higher grade of drink green tea. When you step inside, it's got this fancy vibe like a traditional tea ceremony room. You can kick back and enjoy the sweet taste of top quality uji matcha in a peaceful real deal Japanese setup. Sario Suisen serves up all kinds of Japanese sweets from warabi mochi to puffy and even matcha latte 3D art. Each sweet has this perfect mix of bitterness and sweetness and looks super cute, totally Instagram worthy. One thing to keep in mind is that you cannot make reservations at this cafe so depending on when you go, you might have to wait a bit. But if you're on the hunt for a tasty and trendy matcha cafe in Kyoto, Sario Suisen is definitely a must visit. Number 8. Himitsukichi Komukomu Sakaba This izakaya just opened up in March 2021 and it's got a seriously cool concept. It's a short 15 minute walk from Kyoto Station and as soon as you step inside, you will see how unique it is. I will show you why. The building itself is a century old and used to be a public bath called Kujoyu. In Japan, public bath or sento are a big part of the culture where people can relax in hot water. Now, this izakaya has transformed that sento into a new kind of community space and an izakaya with its own special idea. <laughs> Let's talk about the seating. They've turned the old bathtubs into seats. And you order and pay at the counter where you used to get your bath tickets before. Wooden tacks are used to mark your table and you get one when you order. You can still see wooden tacks in the shoes boxes of public baths and Japanese restaurants. The food here is delicious and they've got a drink menu with a wide variety including specialty sakes from all over and even cream sodas. I want to give a big shout out to the lobster tomato cream croquettes and the daily spiced curry I tried during my visit. They even serve your drinks in milk bottles just like they used to in public bath houses. And if you're up for some extra fun, they have a gachapon for 500 yen that gives you cool prizes. What's in it? See, I got the milk bottle. And the best part is you get to keep it as a souvenir. This izakaya is a perfect mix of history and a cool new idea so you've got to check it out. Make sure to reserve a spot especially if you want to sit in the area where the public bath used to be. Number 9. Jukkokubune you will find the Fushimi Jukkokubune near Chushojima Station in the Fushimi area, just a 10 minute train ride from Gion Shijo, right in the heart of Kyoto. This boat offers a lovely waterside view of sake breweries and rows of willow trees, making it feel like a journey back in time to the Edo period. Fushimi has been a hub for sake brewing for around 400 years with the Uji River and waterways serving as the historical transportation routes for sake and rice to Osaka. Today, you can enjoy a boat trip and take in the scenic view of charming sake breweries with white walls along the water's edge. Throughout the year, you can experience the changing scenery from cherry blossoms in spring to autumn leaves and snowy landscapes. We opted for the Jukkokubune course which lasts about 15 minutes, but there's also a shorter Sanjukkokubune excursion taking about 40 minutes. Keep in mind that reservations are a must and can be made through the website. Just a heads up, the service is currently available only in Japanese. To make a reservation, you can use the Google Lens capability and you can find more information on how to use it in my previous video, so check it out later. Last but not least, I'd like to share with you the most famous spot in Kyoto. Number 10. Fushimi Inari Taisha You might have seen this view at least once. It's definitely a must-see if you're a first-timer. By the way, temples and shrines are different things. Temples are linked to Buddhism, while shrines are scared spot in Shintoism. This is a shrine and what makes it special is the row of more than 1,000 bright red torii gates along the pathway. These gates mark the entrance to this holy place and symbolize faith. People donate these gates as acts of gratitude to the shrine and they draw in lots of visitors. Once again, because it's a shrine, there's no entrance fee or set opening hours. 
but I suggest going in the morning or afternoon since it gets pretty dark at night. It's at Inari Station, which is only two stations away from Kyoto Station, making it very accessible. How was the 10 spots? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like button. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. See you at the next video!